Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I'm stuck under a bridge because it's raining. It wasn't supposed to rain today, but it's a great time to have a little talk. And let's talk about today's video is going to be about game. Game. What is game? Let's start there for for the some, some of the new guys. Game is simply sen sensitivity. It's uh, Garmin's word for sensitivity. And you need to understand what gain does to the pitcher in order to set your uh, unit up the correct way. Now, I've been out here today doing a lot of tests. I'm doing some tests with the 24 version of the software, the 24 version with the uh, uh, 2.54 transducer. I did some versions of the 26.2 software with the 2.54 transducer, and I did some versions of testing with the 26.2 and the 2.57 transducer. I did a lot of testing. I wanted to see what, to be honest, I wanted to see what the big difference was. There is some differences. Uh, and that's, that's gonna be a whole different test. But today we're gonna talk about gain. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna switch over to uh, the other camera we're going to kind of look at it and then we're also going to do some active captain all right i decided to go straight into active target knowing what gain is is very important um at the very end of this i'm going to talk about how i equate gain to so you might want to stick around for that little talking portion of this but we start on 50 that's extremely too low for this particular setup i'm crappie fishing i got it at 30 feet i'm fishing a bridge pylon um, so I turn it all the way up to 100, but watch the shad. Notice how they start to blend, and it starts to become one big blown out mess. So we know that's too high. We knew it was too high before we started, but we need to see what gain does to the pitcher. That's what's important. That's how we find our settings. There is no magic number. There is no magic setting. There's some baseline settings, but there is no magic number. When you know what gain does, then you can make the proper adjustments. Just like if you know what TVG does, you can make that proper adjustment. All right, so we backed it down uh, to about 68%, which I feel is optimum for this situation, but I wanna drop a jig down to make sure, because that's, that's the real key. Being able to drop a jig down and make sure you can see your jig, and you can, you can see it beautifully right here. Um, that's perfect. I mean, I love the look of that. I'm seeing the bridge pylons. They're kind of in line with each other, but you see those big crappie right on the edge of the bridge pylons. Um, you can see some target separation in the fish. You can see target separation in the shad. Um, looks good to me. Um, but even then, as I've got my jig down there, I'll still play with the game. And now this takes a few seconds when you first get on the lake. Like, see, I'll play with my game see, because I want to know. I want to make sure that I'm in that optimum. That was very cool to see that fish with the shad and a circle around it. That's pretty awesome. They avoided that thing like he had to play. But that's what you're looking for. Go, go too low. Go too high. That way when you work yourself back down, like this is just too low. Still see my jig, but I'm losing the fish. So I think, hey, I got to make a little adjustment. Got to come up a little bit. And then I find that number, which on this one particular, 68, there's a, shed, there's a white perch or a crappie right there by two or three down, about five foot behind the boat. Um, but I'll, I'm just playing to try to find it. So that's what you got to do. You got to get out there and experiment. Now you know what gain does. Now you can adjust gain and properly get the proper settings because there is no magic number. And that's a fact. So as you've seen, as we went through that video, the effects of gain. Now you know by turning the sensitivity up, yes, your bait pops more. Yes, the fish pop more. But the artifacts in the water, the turbidity uh, in the water pops more. So you have to try to find that fine line. 50 is too high and on the, my, my particular setup. I'll make that very clear it's before everybody starts hounding. My particular setup today, 50 is too low. 100, of course, too high. 75, a tad bit too high. So I started backing down from 75 down to 68 because I'm crappie fishing. And 
what I'm looking for is in that 25 to 30 foot range, zero to 30, I back down until I found the picture that I wanted with uh, the interference in the water that I could, that I felt was acceptable. Now, I could have turned the noise control up and the noise will kind of eat away the, uh, some of that little cloudiness in the water. But, you know, I try to leave the noise control off as much as possible. You know, sometimes you can put it on low and medium and it'll eat up just a little bit of that cloudiness without killing the sensitivity or the returns of your bait and things like that. Um, and I compare gain to uh, having three flashlights in the backyard. Go outside, throw a basketball in your backyard. Go get that cubing or that big, huge floodlight. It'll light up the entire backyard. Everything is bright, everything is popping. Can't tell the difference, can't get good target separation. Now, if you go out there with a little pin light, can't see anything. Uh, you, you can see the resemblance of things, but if you get the proper flashlight, you can see that basketball good and everything else isn't blown out in the in the process. So it's finding that happy medium. And that's what gain is all about. Finding the sensitivity level that you can, uh, that you're happy with in terms of bait return and happy uh, with in terms of seeing the fish and the structure and the target separation that you're looking for. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Hey, we're flying up in numbers and don't forget, man, Hit the bell.